Number one says that the number of letters received in the mail over the past weekend is, has been recorded, which value appears to be an outlier. And remember that an outlier is a number that's significantly different than the rest of the data. And so that's going to be the 15 in this one. It's much larger than the other ones. Number two, Elena collects 112 specimens of beetle and records their length for an ecology research project. She returns to the laboratory and finds that she incorrectly recorded one of the lengths of the beetles to be 122 centimeters. What should she do with the outlier? So obviously incorrect. The beetle is not that long. So she's got a, a few things that she should do. She should probably um, try to figure out which beetle she mismeasured. So she should go back and measure the beetles again to see if she can figure out her mistake. If she can't um, find the mistake, can't find the beetle that she measured wrong, then she should throw the data out, the 122, so the outlier. So go back in, measure, see if she can figure out where the mistake is. If she can't find which one was wrong, then she should just throw the outlier out of her data. Number three, Mai took a survey of students in her class to find out how many hours they spend reading each week. Here are some summary statistics for the data that Mai gathered. Give an example of a number of hours larger than the median, which would be an outlier. Explain your reasoning. So remember, um, looking at your, you could look back into your lesson summary. And let me get to the lesson summary here. So you could look at your lesson summary to remember what an outlier is considered. And so it's an outlier if it's more than one and a half times the inter interquartile range above Q3. Okay, so we want to figure out what the interquartile range is and then put that on top of or add it to the Q3 value. And that would be where our outliers start. So if we look at figuring out the IQR here, so remember the IQR is going to be subtracting your quartile 3 um, by your quartile 1. So 11 minus 5 gives us our interquartile range of 6. So then if we take the interquartile range and multiply that by 1.5, so if we do 6 times 1.5, that gives us 9. So if our number is 9 higher than the upper quartile, so this Q3, meaning if we add 9 to this, that would give us 20. Anything 20 and higher would be um, an outlier. So you could pick any number 20 or higher. So I'm just going to pick 21. And we know because it's more than a more than one and a half times the quartile past Q3. So then part B says, are there any outliers below the median? Okay, so below the median would mean it would have to go from Q1 and subtract 9. So be 9 below. So that would give us a data point of negative 4. And this is how many hours students spent reading each week. And you can't read negative hours. So no, um, because negative hours don't make sense in this data or in this context. Number four, the box plot shows the statistics for weight in pounds of some dogs. Are there any outliers in this data? So again, for the outliers, we need to calculate the IQR, which is the distance from Q1 to Q3. So we would, you could either count it here or you can say 55 minus 35. And so whoops, 55 minus 35 would give us 20 for that IQR. 
then you want to look at 1.5 times the IQR. So 1.5 times 20 gives us 30. So any numbers that are further than 30 from either IQR are considered outliers. So this is at 55. So if we go up 30 from that, anything outside of 85 is an outlier. And we don't know what's here, but we do know that this is the maximum number in the data set. So we know that 95 was a data point. So absolutely, we know there's at least one outlier. So yes, there is at least one outlier, 95, um, because it is more than 1.5 times the IQR above Q3. Number five, the mean exam score for the first group of 20 exam examinees to apply for a security job is 35.3 with a standard deviation of 3.6. The mean score for the second group of 20 examinees is 34.1 with a standard deviation of 0.5. Both distributions are close to symmetric in shape. Use the mean and standard deviation to compare the scores. So um, the first set has a higher typical score at 35.3, but has um, more variability in the data since their standard deviation is 3.6, so larger than that 0.5. Um, and then in the minimum score required to get an in-person interview is 33. Which group do you think has more people get in-person interviews? So if we take a look at this data, this first set, right, we would expect the bulk of the data to be, so let's take 35.3 and subtract 3.6. So 35.3 minus 3.6 gives us 31.7. And then if we do 35.3 plus 3.6, we'd be at 38.9. And if we do the same thing on this second set of data, so 34.1 minus the 0.5 would give us our lower kind of boundary of the bulk of the data to be 33.6. And then if we added the 0.5, we'd be at 34.6. So this kind of shows us that the bulk of the data in the second group is already above 33. The bulk here is above 31. So since the bulk here is already above the minimum score, it seems to make sense that more people in the second group would get in-person interviews. So I, I mean, and that's what I think. Maybe you think differently, but I think... Um, the second group would have more people get in-person interviews because the bulk of the people in the second set are above 33.6. which is above the minimum requirement. Number six, a group of pennies made in 2018 are weighed the approximate, um, the mean is approximately 2.5 grams and the standard deviation is 0.2 grams. Interpret the mean and standard deviation in terms of this context. So this says that the typical weight of the pennies is 2.5 grams with um, very little variability, only, you know, the 0.02 standard deviation, meaning a bulk, meaning or the bulk of pennies um, weighed so 2.5 minus 0 0.02, so 2.48 um, to 2.52 grams. 
Number seven, the values represent the expected number of paintings a person will produce over the next 10 days. What are the mean and the standard deviation of the data? You can for sure just calculate the mean by adding these all together and dividing by 10. Standard deviation, we need technology. So I'm just gonna do it all in um, GeoGebra here. So if you go to geogebra.org, then you can click on this little button in the upper right hand corner, the circle and the triangle, click on the three dots, get yourself a spreadsheet, and then you can type in the data. So we had three zeros, we had three ones, two twos, a three and a five. So once you have that typed in, you can highlight it, go to the upper left hand corner and click on this bar graph and then one variable analysis. It's gonna pop up a graph. So what you wanna do is click on this button in the right hand corner, this thing that looks like an EX, and then it'll show you those statistics and that'll calculate the mean and the standard deviation for you. So they're these two values, the mean, and then that sigma is for standard deviation. So both of them are 1.5 and I'm just gonna paste that into here so you can see um, that this symbol right here means standard deviation. So that's the Greek letter sigma and it stands for standard deviation. So they are both 1.5 in this case. Um, and then it says the artist is not pleased with these statistics if the five is increased to a larger value. So if we change this five to a larger value, how does that impact the median, the mean, and the standard deviation? Well, no matter what we change this number to, if it's larger, like we could change it to 5,000, that's not going to impact the median because the median is still in the middle. And so we still have these five data, data values below, and these will be above no matter what you turn this one to. So the median is not going to be impacted. So the median will not be impacted. It will stay at one, but the mean and the standard deviation will both be um, increased. Since you're adding a larger number into the data. Now we can't obviously say exactly because your number is gonna change. It's just asking you a bigger number. So we could put 12, we could put seven, we could put 5,000, whatever that is. Um, but the mean will increase because the total of the numbers will increase. And then the standard deviation will increase because it's going to widen the data set. Number eight, list, list the four dot plots in order of variability from least to greatest. So remember, variability is how much the data is varying. Um, so in graph B, the data is not varying at all. So that's going to be the least variable data then you're really looking at the width of these, right? So then this is the next smallest width here. So graph D would be the next. Then it widens out to C. And then the widest spread or variability is in A. So the least to greatest would be B, D, C, A.